Hello and welcome, it's Machine Dana here. I hope you're having a really, really good day. This is a video about how you can make Streamlabs OBS run better. Or actually, to be honest, it's more of a series of four videos where you can figure out how to make Streamlabs OBS run better. Now, one of the critiques of Slobs is that it's quite bulky. It's essentially OBS Studio with like some skins overlaid onto it and some other API stuff pulled into it and widgets uh, enclosed within it and a different user experience and a number of other things. It is quite bloated. <laughs> Streamlabs OBS, it's terrible machine data. It's not terrible. Streamlabs OBS is fine. I've been using it for a while. It's decent. Once you get to grips with it, it's especially good for newbies. Okay, so you're going to find this video really useful if you're struggling with your OBS or your Streamlabs OBS settings. But the whole series of four videos, they will explain a number of different things you can do to optimize the experience for your PC, which then optimizes your gaming experience. And of course, the most important thing is for your broadcast and your viewers as well. We're trying to optimize the software that's being used on your PC for your viewer. I was going to do just one video about this, but I realized that that video probably would have been maybe 30 or 40 minutes long, and it's a little bit too long. The first video is specifically looking at the settings of Streamlabs OBS using really just the settings and based on the limitations of your hardware and your internet. The second video will be how to optimize Streamlabs OBS whilst you are live and things you can do to optimize that for your PC and for your viewers. The third thing will be specific PC related things that you can do, not just when you are live, but in general. The fourth video is game specific settings that you're able to trial and error with to get the best experience. These videos are very much geared up towards anyone that's having problems with Streamlabs OBS and are looking to diagnose issues to make it run a little bit better. Or maybe you're looking to play more graphically intensive games and looking for ways to pinch performance from certain other areas. I'd recommend watching all of the four videos and I will link them in the description below. I really appreciate if you found this useful. If you can give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, feel free to. By all means, feel free to check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this very first video in the series of four will be about the base Streamlabs OBS settings. I'm going to be using a document that NVIDIA have released, which is optimized for OBS, but it applies also to Streamlabs OBS, and that's what I'm using as the basis for this video. But I'll talk about a number of other things, for example, bitrate, talk about your PC hardware, and also some other graphical limitations. I will link the NVIDIA article in the description below as well, so feel free to check that out. Now, one thing I would just point out here, it's worth an investment of your time to spend an hour or even two hours really reading into every single setting individually. I'm not going to go into every single setting individually in terms of what it means and what it means for your stream. I'm just going to tell you the settings that are probably going to work for you and the things that you can do that will make the biggest impact on your stream, particularly if you're experiencing frame drops and things like that. Or you're just a total pleb that can't figure out settings on Streamlabs OBS. The first things first, probably the most or one of the two or three most important things when looking at your stream is of course your internet speed it's the first thing that the nvidia article talks about and your settings and your canvas size and your frame rates that you set within streamlabs obs are going to be very much determined on the bandwidth that you have available and the most important one of the two would be your upload speed your download speed is still quite important particularly if you're using a lot of widgets and browser sources you may need to download information into streamlabs obs into browser sources before it then uploads back so it's a misconception perception that the download speed isn't important but for sure the upload speed is the most important so in this guide it talks a little bit about uh, the upload speed that you have and the bit rate that you should correspond to that and then the resolution as well and of course the frame rate so first thing you want to do is run a google speed test just type google speed test in here here click the speed test i've got basically third world internet in the uk at the moment so results here are a 48 download and a 15 upload i'm literally paying for 75 meg download at the moment I'm getting ripped off by half here. <laughs> the thing to bear in mind here is, as well, is you've got to think about your wider household and who else is using the internet. If you're the only one in your household that's using the internet, then you can use more of the bitrate uh, that's available. Whereas if you're sharing it out with others, you may want to consider making concessions in the settings that you put within Streamlabs OBS. So the article here focuses on the upload speed as being the most important. For me, kind of a 12 to a 15 upload. So I'm in this kind of bracket here. Now, you may or may not know this, but the upload limit to Twitch for affiliates and non-partners 
say 6,000 kilobits per second. Now, just because that is the limit to Twitch, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should run with that. If you have a six megabits per second upload limit on your bandwidth, you don't want to be probably using 100% of that to your stream because your stream is probably going to be choppy. As a rule of thumb, I would recommend apportioning 50 to 75% of your upload speed to streaming, and that leaves 25 to 50% for the rest of the household and like a little bit of a buffer zone. Again, the aim here is to have a stable stream that has a decent quality, the most optimized quality, and it not be choppy. So for me, if I apportion 6,000, uh, which is the upload limit for Twitch, and I've got 15.8 megabits per second upload, it's less than half that's being used. I'm pretty confident that it's not going to be my internet that is the choke point for my stream if there are problems on my stream. Now, frame rate can make a pretty big difference here. So if you think about this logically, it's essentially like sending 60 pictures up to the cloud versus sending 30 pictures up to the cloud. The amount of data that's needed for one versus the other, basically half. I'm going to talk a little bit about resolutions um, in terms of your canvas size and things like that later, but just for the purposes of bitrate. Twitch doesn't currently allow streaming in 4K, although that sounds like it's going to be just around the corner with the next 30 series generations of graphics cards. So your resolution limit is going to be 1920 by 1080 for Twitch. I think you can stream at higher rates on YouTube, but I'm not as experienced in YouTube, so don't quote me on that. But Machine Dana, you said we could stream 4K. As a rule of thumb here, you want to be working ideally within a 1080 range if you can sustain that. And that's got a few things. You've got to bear in mind your internet. You've got to bear in mind the hardware that you've got. And you've got to bear in mind the stability of your stream and how you've optimized the settings. And it might be trial and error. But you're probably going to be working with either 1080, 900 or 720. Some people work as low as 320 and 540. I would say a stream at 320 and 540 is probably not going to be as attractive for people if they're browsing around Twitch if you're streaming at 320. Many people will probably bounce away from streams where the resolution simply isn't that high. However, the most important thing when streaming is that it's a stable stream. It's better to have a stable stream at 720 than a choppy stream at 1080. I think most people know this, but it's worth just mentioning anyway so for me i know i've got at least an 8 to 10 megabits per second upload speed so i know i can apportion at least 6,000. if you've got six megabits per second don't apportion 6,000 kilobits per second it's going to use it all up and there's none for your phone there's none for your wireless dildos or whatever <laughs> So now we get into some actual meat and bones of the Streamlabs OBS settings. So we open up Streamlabs OBS here. First of all, you do get an indication of the CPU usage frames per second that you're running at, the number of frames that's being sent to the streaming service in terms of percentage. Of course, you want to be aiming for 100%. You're never always going to get 100%, but if you're in the sort of 95 to 100% range, the stream's not going to look too choppy, particularly if you're at 60 frames per second. If you're at 30 frames per second and you're getting 90 or even 80, you're going to get frame drops that's going to be noticeable on the stream. The Streamlabs OBS settings settings are obviously located here and we're mainly concerned today with the output settings here there isn't an advanced mode and a simple mode i'm going to be concentrating on the advanced mode for the time being because i'm actually recording on streamlabs obs i'm not going to be able to change any of these settings because you can't change them while you're alive i think that's probably pretty obvious but we can talk about these settings and how you can optimize them now if you want to keep things really really simple you can just look at the output mode and go to simple output mode within streamlabs obs and this just takes away some of the noise of the settings and allows you to kind of set some overarching settings but not drill into the details if you're a little bit of a technophobe and you don't want to trial and error too much and really optimize your settings i would recommend this but for most people if you're streaming there's a good chance that you're not a technophobe and therefore let's just skip straight to the advanced settings big brain baby now let's just talk briefly about the encoder to use here if you didn't know the encoder is the bit that actually does the processing work it's essentially processing all the frames and the data and encoding it ready to be sent up graphics card that are from NVIDIA and of a certain generation will have an NVENC setting and that has an, a built-in encoder within the graphics card itself which means your CPU is not taking any of the pressure or rather is taking a lot less of the pressure. Now I know what you're thinking how do I figure out if I've got an NVENC encoder? Well there's this wonderful thing called the internet and also another wonderful thing called like Google so why don't you just Google it? Okay well guess what I've Googled it for you already because I'm that much of a nice guy so there's an article here from Elgato I'll link it in the description below. If you want to check the exact name of your graphics card go to this Wikipedia page here these are all the different graphics cards and essentially anything that's got a GK 
GM, GP, or a TU, if they begin with those codes, you're pro you've probably got an NVENC encoder inside. If you don't see those, then you probably do not have an NVENC encoder inside your graphics card, in which case, don't select NVENC. It, it really is as simple as that. Most 10 series, all 20 series, and all 30 series graphics cards do have an NVENC encoder inside them. Even quite a lot of the 90 series is... Series is? Series is? Series is? Series is? Series... Series, Sirai, Sirai, Sirai is plural. Even the 90 Sirai has GM at the start and therefore indicates it has an NVENC encoder inside it. Your encoder setting is going to be pretty much predetermined by whether or not you've got the NVENC encoder inside your graphics card. Enforcing streaming service encoder settings, I would recommend leaving this checked uh, as the article says. Now, most of the things in this article I did do, there were some things that I changed. I had to do some trial and error, but this article I found to be quite a solid article. I was experiencing some issues along the way when I first started streaming and the biggest improvements that I made were when I took the time to understand every single setting here and i replicated most of those settings the key frame intervals you want to set to two streaming platforms may limit what you can do here and most require a setting of two another key setting here is the psycho visual tuning keep that checked when i turned that off that did make quite a big difference to my stream so now we get into look ahead and max b frames i want to talk a little bit about this so look ahead what this does is it essentially looks within the different frames that you're sending up for similarities between the different frames and if there are a lot of similarities in something that you're doing it won't reprocess basically the same image multiple times if it's not changing what this does is it frees up some resource for your encoder to focus on the stuff that actually is changing and to process them better they recommend here setting it to four but if you unchecked the look ahead option then reduce it to two b frames now for me i've got look ahead turned off to max b frames i have tried both and i found a little bit of a performance kick when i had just two b frames and no look ahead it may be different for yourself you don't want to be looking ahead at four frames i have got different options for setting profiles i would recommend starting this on high profile determines a group of settings for the h264 codec it doesn't impact performance and gives access to a set of features that are key to streaming so this should always be set to high i recommend putting it on high and not messing around with that one too much just to put into perspective the nvenc thing that i mentioned within a video encoder you're able to get a 1.7 cpu utilization versus on average a 25 percent cpu utilization if you're using 264 apparently this equates to 56 percent more frames per second you know what they say frames win games it's the frames it's definitely not my terrible play so what this is really about is freeing up processing speed for your game to perform versus the stream itself because the stream is being managed by the encoder okay so i'm now just going to talk a little bit about canvas versus the output scaled resolution that you should be using for your stream i've already mentioned earlier that if you're streaming at 360 to 540 you may turn some viewers off but some people may be forced to do that if your hardware is at a lower level if you've got kind of a moderate to high level pc there's no real way you should be using a 360 to a 540 resolution stream unless the choke point is your internet unless you, if you've got complete garbage internet then you might need to use like maybe a 540 resolution but that is probably the only situation i would recommend it if you've got a decent pc my pc is not a great pc but it's not terrible either i've got a 1080 gtx an i7 processor bags of ram and an ssd so i've got a pretty good pc i will also drop my pc settings below so you can make a comparison from what you've seen in the video to my pc hardware so if you've got similar hardware to me you can probably use similar settings to what i've recommended here for me i've got a 4k monitor that i game on and i downscale it to 1080 1080 as i've already mentioned is the maximum that you can stream out on twitch but sometimes this is about ruling in or out whether the issue that you're having or some issues that you're having are internet related hardware related or just simply settings in streamlabs obs and of course the settings you can tweak around with the internet you're probably stuck with the hardware well you can go out and buy a new pc if you want but you may not be able to do that you may be stuck with that as well one thing i would strongly recommend with resolution is that you try to get a divisible amount by half on the scaled resolution and the reason for this is it does make it significantly easier for the 
encoder to split by half. So for instance, me at 4K, 2160 divided by half is 1080. That's a good divisible amount. 380, 40 by 1920 is a good divisible amount on the width. If your resolution, for instance, is 1920 by 1080, you could output to 100% and there's no splitting and downscaling, but that is obviously reliant on your hardware being of a, at least a moderate standard and your bit rate being at least 6,000 upload limit. But really to achieve the 6,000, you want to have at least a 10 to 12 megabits per second internet speed, upload speed that is. If you've got a 1920 by 1080, you could always consider if you've got a lower end piece of hardware or you've got a choke point with your internet, streaming at 540 is divisible by two. You could try 720 if your graphics card is good enough. So if you find that you're having issues on 1920, 1080, before looking at changing the resolution, you can always try lowering the frames per second to 30. People would much rather watch a stable stream at 30 FPS than a choppy stream at 60. Even if the resolution is high and the frames are 30 FPS, that's a good stream. But these are all options that you can tweak and trial and error with. So if you find that 1080 is not working for you, first start by reducing the frames per second and do a stream and see how that is. If that works, great. If you want to, then, if you want to move up to 60 FPS, but you're not sure about the canvas, try bringing the canvas down to 900 or 720 or ideally dividing it by two. Hopefully that gives you some sort of flavor about the base canvas versus the output scaled resolution. The base canvas is essentially your monitor and the output is what the viewer will see on Twitch or on YouTube gaming. And of course, anything higher than 1080 for Twitch won't be relevant anyway, currently. If you've viewed this video, done some trial and error, and you still find that you're not being able to get a stable stream, I would definitely recommend looking at the other three videos linked in the description of other things that you can do to optimize your PC. However, if by changing your settings based on this video, you've got a stream that's fine and stable, you probably don't need to look at some of those other stuff, but you may still want to anyway. They're only quite short videos. Once again, thanks for viewing. Feel free to like the video, subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Take care.